It's John Givens and Craig Cannon just here for a little chat about our Jürgen Klopp interview which went out yesterday. Uh, lots of you will have seen it because, I mean, first of all, the views on it have blown me away, really. I'm mm, like, yeah. I, I just sort of keep checking uh, <laughs> just to sort of see because I'm, I'm made up to how many people are watching it and enjoying it. The comments are, are all unbelievable. So before we talk, we're going to talk basically a little bit about the interview and how these things sort of come about and a little bit behind the scenes, but with us, but also you know, talk about interviewing them over the years and things like that if we get time. But... You know, before we get into all that, it is really nice that people have enjoyed it so much, people are sharing it. And what I always want from these, Craig, is to, whenever we interview the manager or any players, is for people, other supporters, watch it to feel like I feel like supporters are interviewing them. And I feel like, in a way, we're interviewing them. And that's what I've got overwhelmingly from this, not too nice. Yeah. Uh, that, that that's a hundred percent it. You're like you feel you feel very very lucky to be in that position, and so you sort of want to represent everyone else in the best way, and you want to ask yeah. them the questions that they would want to hear. You want to hear you're going to talk about the things that they would want in that moment. Um, yeah, it, it it's been unreal to be honest. Like when we did it, we like we knew it was gonna it was gonna have to go out for free, didn't we? Like as in like we wanted it to because we wanted. We just felt as if he was like talking to everyone, and everyone needs to hear what he had to say. And I think yeah, he wasn't just talking to us; he was talking almost through us, really. Yes, exactly, exactly. Um, and you know, you're in like a really privileged position that you're able to sort of sit and listen to him in the room. But um, you know, I've watched it back. I think I've watched it back. Like I might be like ten thousand of those views. To be honest. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just because, I, like, I, I've I, up until. That interview has gone out. I don't. I think I was. I think I was still in the denial stage. And then as soon as I did the interview, I thought I'd be sad after the interview, and it wasn't. I was. I was happy. I was happy for him. He. He sounded like a man, uh, on camera and off camera. He sounded like a man who just needs a holiday and needs to not be a football manager for a while. And it was made up that he was going to get that. It was made up he was going to be able to enjoy life before he gets too old. Too. I think it was something he said. Um, but then I watched the interview back and suddenly I was sad because this is the end. Um, but what a lovely way to sort of finish it all off. No, and it's, and it's been, you know, a lovely way to, to finish our sort of working relationship with Jürgen as well, if you like, because, you know, we've interviewed him seven or eight times. And I spoke to him a little bit before the interview about, you know, thanking him for how much he's, he's done with us, really. And, and he references it in the interview. So you'll hear him say, oh, I said before about it. He's quite nice about the Anfield Rep in the interview. But he was talked a little bit longer f- um, beforehand, you know, just, just saying, like, you know, he appreciates what we do. And, you know, he, he feels like, you know, we're, you know, he watches us and, and, we're, and we're reasonable. And we'll obviously, you know, we're not happy when they lose and stuff like that. But at the same time, we're trying to understand what's happened and what's gone wrong and, 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 and think about, well, why has the manager made this decision and why, the, why aren't the players looking the best and sorts of things like that. And he, and he always felt like he, he appreciated that. And you felt like over the years, like we have, like, you know, got a, a decent enough bond with him, like in terms of, you know, he, he looks at us and thinks, yeah, that's how they're, you know, that's how I think supporters should sort of be, really. And obviously, it's not just us, but, but he's like, he feels like the way a good example of like supporting your team, I suppose. Yeah, I, I, I think it's the support. It's absolutely the supporter thing. I think throughout the years, like, um, you know, when we've done interviews with him, when, we'd sp- when speaking to him, you, get, you, you very much get the feeling that he like enjoys speaking to us because. Like quite often he wants to hear about our experiences as yeah. fans because you know that's he, he's getting a different experience within the stadium and so on. Um, so I think I think you're right. I think it's that. I think I think he's built up a trust, and obviously that comes from doing interviews and and I'm enjoying each interview and I'm enjoying sort of seeing you. Um, you know, each time that you have sort of sat down with him, but um, I think you know Jurgen has always understood the the strength of this football club whenever it works as a collective yeah and he's always understood you know he's you see that at his time in Dortmund I, I remember whenever he was coming in I was I was looking at Dortmund and what he'd achieved there not just on the pitch but like the way they they sung about him the way they loved him and thought like I want a bit of that and he's brought that in and so you know he's obviously looked at um you know fan-led sort of media like us and saw it as you know something that could that could be a help rather than a hindrance and, and hopefully we have been yeah and that's it and <laughs> Like you say, it's because we are supporters and you, you, what comes across in the interview as well is that he's looking forward to a normal life and I think he'd love to have engaged with even more supporters and he'd love to, 
you know, come the pub after games and spoke to people, but it just would have been insane. And I think he knows that, you know, he's had a little try of it, a little taste of it on that first night that he talks about it, like, you know, everyone wants a picture and stuff like that. And I think he's just, so I think he's just met us and went, well, these will do. I'll talk to these and he'd love to speak to even more fans. And I'd love more of our contributors, our people involved to have met Jürgen. I'd love more of you, you know, to have met Jürgen. I do feel very lucky that we have, but I think for us, it has been a bit of a thing for him. He's like, well, yeah, these lads seem all right, so I'll, I'll, I'll chat to them. That was actually the bit this, the bit that made me sad in, in the interview, actually, was when we asked him right at the beginning, like, you know, what would you like to do in Liverpool? And he basically said, like, I haven't got to do anything in Liverpool. Like, and, and he he said something like four times he'd been in Liverpool and twice was on a on a, on a a trophy free truck. On <laughs> a truck, which you know, was uh, line, yeah. And, and, but there was a part of me who was like, that's it, it's a shame. And obviously, you know why? It's, it was the same with, you know, it's, it's obviously the same with players like Van Dijk and Trent. They can't go into the city. It was the same with Gerrard before that. That. Um, but you've always got the feeling of Jurgen that he just like he loves to have a good time and he'd love to he loves to experience things and he would love to be in the city and be able to experience it in the way that like when he was talking to us about um, you know him being a I think he, he lives life in the second tier was it he said second row second row um, and it was it was this idea that he watches he, he watches the fans sort of enjoy uh, all of the moments that he's given to us like on on screen or he watches his family members sort of when they stay you know with him come to the game be on holiday enjoy themselves and he doesn't really get it. and and I I actually felt a bit sad about all of that so that was one of the reasons why I was like really excited for him to sort of finish with us because I just thought like you deserve a big holiday, don't you? You deserve to go out and, and, and sort of experience life and enjoy it as much as you can. And that's what he's determined to do. And what's really come across when we um, when we interviewed him and when we spoke to him before, and actually, you know, me and Neil saw him at a different thing a few weeks ago. It was just like, I just end up having an informal chat with him. And he doesn't know what's next. And, and, and there's a, some people are kind of like, oh, what is he? What's he going to do? What's he going to do? And he's like, I don't know. And I'm going to rest and then I'm going to decide. But then, but I can't decide till the rest. And everyone's yeah. like, but then what after that? And he's like, I don't know, because then how I'm going to feel because I've never had a rest. Yeah. And so it's like, I haven't done the bit that I need to do first before I decide what's next. And, and everyone's one, going, yeah, but what's next? Yeah, yeah. And the one thing we know about him is it, it's like 100% authenticity. Yeah. What he is saying is what he means. Um, you, you really got that sense in the interview and hopefully you do in the video is like, you know, he doesn't know. Like he needs, he needs a big rest. He looks and sounds like a man who needs a big rest, needs a change. He says he'll work. He says he'll do bits of work, but whether it's football management in the future, I'm, I'm not sure. But um, you know, one thing he can sort of be sure of is that what he's saying to us is is is, is completely honest. We've always known mm. that about Jurgen. Yeah, and, and and that sort of comes across in it as well. How do how do you find them when you're doing them? Because I this time I was really and. I'm not anxious, but I was really conscious to tell myself to like enjoy it. Do you know what I mean? And so like, you know, quite often when you go into interviews with with manager or players or whoever, like obviously you're concentrating on what you want to do and and, and you concentrate on doing a good job. And then afterwards, I, I've said nine times out of ten, you're normally there if we're on tour or whatever. And I always say, was that all right? Because like I'm almost like I don't yeah. know if it was any good or not because you're so concentrating on what he's saying and the next thing and stuff like that. I always have to sort of listen to them back to like fully kind of like appreciate it and there'll always be a little bit of it that I'm like, oh yeah, he said said sort of that really. I, I often come out in a bit of a daze from them really. Uh, this time, I think it helped that there was four of us so it was more of a chat so it was less of like, oh, what's my next question yeah. or less of, oh, that's interesting. I'll, I'll ask him something about that. Um, there was also less pressure on all of us individually really. Uh, which I think helped in terms of, well, it helped in terms of producing some good content, but also I think it helped me in terms of like being able to tell myself like appreciate this moment and appreciate like being able to do this and like enjoy it and enjoy being in his company. Yeah, massively. I think like a any other time I have been, I've, I've, it's, it's when he walks in, it's like God walked into the room. That's how I felt in the moment. And like, I've been obviously a bit nervous and so on, but always, I, I, with them all, I always try and sort of just treat them like normal human beings. You know what I mean? I know that sounds ridiculous because that's literally what they are, but to us, they aren't. Like, we put them up on a pedestal, particularly him. He's like my all time fucking sporting hero, hero, like, um, in general. Um, it was interesting this time because I, I don't usually do interviews like, 
This is that was my second ever sit down interview. My first with Gini Wijnaldum. <laughs> that See, time. when you said that, I was like, surely that's not. Right. No, that's I've never, I've never, I've never done one before. The only one I did was Gini Wijnaldum once uh, because we were at a thing and and we got him for fifteen minutes and we didn't realise we were going to. We well, it was no... the, it was the Champions League final before Kiev, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. It was like a media day no. and, and we don't. At that point, you hadn't been invited to many of those things, so I think we just thought you were going down to do a bit of social. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, I did as well. Fucking hell! Uh, but for this, it was like a little bit different because you're able to think about what you what you wanted to talk about, and and actually, like, you know, I I knew he would lead quite a lot of it. I knew it was going to be about listening to what he had to say and then jump off those sort of things. And um, I knew the one thing I wanted to talk to him was about the League Cup final. That was the one. But and I I I get what you're saying. Like whilst because that was my first time sort of experiencing that, I just was sitting, I was trying to sort of just take this all, take, take this all in, take this all and appreciate this. And of course you don't, like it doesn't, until I watched it on the TV, like it didn't fully sort of like feel real. None of it felt real. I think as well what helped, I think we can say this, like before the interview started, um, we gave him a little gift. Can we say this, can't we? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, we gave him a little gift and it was basically a book of fan photos um, from throughout his time and the, and the idea was that um, you know he's talked about collecting moments and collecting relationships is something that he gets from football so the idea was that we would show him all of the moments that we've collected and the relationships that have been built um, during his time so it was you know fan pictures people will have seen me asking for these online and and the book looked amazing didn't it David? yeah like it was it was class like I, I i almost kept it the night before i was sticking it all in the night before like an art project and there was a part of me that was like if i keep this you're gonna never know, you know? <laughs> but but actually like we gave it to him and he was like made up with it and um and he and he looked through it all and and so like he said something like this is such a nice idea yeah like when he was looking at them and it was mad watching him like look at the pictures of like Kev. <laughs> yeah, 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 and there was like you know there was contributors and subscribers and 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 it was lovely just to compile it all and it was across countries and at Wembley and it, you know it was brilliant. But it, the idea was he doesn't get to see all those things and actually it was it was interesting when we were talking to him like and he was saying about how he, he experienced his life in the in the second row. Well, there's the first row. Do you know what mm. I mean? That was like that was the journey that we were all on together and. Um, I think us giving him, we give that to him, we didn't want it to be a thing on camera, we didn't want it to be a big thing, but like, I think giving that to him just calmed me down. Like, it, it just, it, it went from feeling like you were in the room with God, as it usually does, to you're just having a chat with a fella, and I think that's what made it a really, really nice interview. Yeah, absolutely, and you know, you mentioned there the League Cup question, and he, and he was made up to talk about that, it was, which was nice as well, because it's, it's always good when you're like, oh, I want to ask him about this, and then the, the person's just as excited as you are, mm. and he was, he was made up to talk about that League Cup final, wasn't he, and, and it is a really nice part of the interview. Yeah, 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 it, it, it just encapsulates everything that's good about Jurgen Klopp, doesn't it, that day, um, and I, I don't know about you, but like with those, you're like sort of, I, the, the whole way through I was making sure that because you're in a room with your own club and you're sitting down with him you might never do that again and there's a part of you that just wants to chat to him do you know what I mean isn't there but you know no one's there to hear you so the whole way I was like trying to think of how I asked the question and give him a little bit of like how it felt to us but like yeah. not take too long on that because no one gives a fuck about you know they want Jurgen um, but yeah he was made up he, he, he loved it um, yeah what was your what was your sort of favourite part of it I really liked when he talked about Trent's mum. Yeah. I really liked that because, so so I asked him a question about like w what you're most sort of proud of really. And he said, well, pride's not really the, the, the word he, he'd sort of use, but he, he talked about, you know, because I talked about, is it the trophies? Is it the, the, the famous nights? Is it the, the wins? Is it developing players? And, you know, he talked about the fact that, you know, Trent's mum would come in and, you know, what and basically told a story that, when she was when he was younger and or she was younger as well, someone had said, "Oh, he needs an English manager because if the foreign manager won't give the academy a go, basically." So when Jürgen came in, like she was shitting herself a bit, and then obviously, you know, Jürgen's giving him everything, hasn't he? And backed him in tough times, and so just saying thank you really, and it's just a reminder of, of the human side of football, yeah, yeah. and that's what Jürgen, you know, is is good at generally, and and, and what Jürgen really appreciates is the, you know. Is, is is that like life can be very different and, and you need a bit of luck and you need someone to back you and that's the case for for anything any part of life really isn't it do you know what I mean like you know we've where we've got to now and you know we've worked really hard and, and we've worked hard in the relationships with with Liverpool and, and, and with Jürgen which is you know why we get there but but also lucky bastards really aren't we and I think like I think um 
you know, that's how they sort of see themselves a little bit as well. And so it was a reminder that, you know, there's, there's personal stories and Trent's mum, at the end of the day, is just a woman who had a kid and wants the kid to be happy and wants what's best for them and wants all their dreams, whatever they are, to be sort of fulfilled. And, um, and that, that was really nice. That I, 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 You know, it was a nice sort of personal story that, like you had not heard him tell before, because literally because it just happened, and so so that was nice. Yeah, it's like uh, it's like how he impacts the people, even indirectly. Like because um, he talked about Trent's brother as well, and about yeah. how, like, he, his career off the bat, and how like you know the Trent coming through, and then how that impacts that, and so on. And that's like a really nice. That I mean, that's the thing I always think about Jurgen is like how many people's lives have been mm. impacted by him that he'll sort of never know or never yeah. understand, uh, whether it's the career, whether it's the personal lives, as fans, the experiences, the places we've gone, the relationships we've we've sort of built because of him. Um, but yeah, no, I, I love that bit as well. Yeah, absolutely. So you have to my job now? <laughs> Do you know what? I might, I might, uh, that, might, easy, that, might, be, lad, that might be me, you know. I'll just retire. Maybe, maybe. And just start and end on that, really. Um, yeah, the Genie and Alden one wasn't. I'm not. Um, I'm not putting that out on the YouTube. Any <laughs> that's shit, not, that's not a LinkedIn. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, I, do you know what? I, I I really enjoyed it, but I enjoyed it because there was the three of us rather than like you know I, I w- you know I wouldn't be able to enjoy it if it was just me and him. Like um, there was, even I, though he's your mate. <laughs> I think I I really enjoyed when he was like he talked directly to you and so on. But I wouldn't enjoy that if I was having to come up with the next question every time. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So no, I might just stick to work. Oh, you're doing a good job. <laughs> uh, hope you've enjoyed that. Um, listen, if if you haven't watched the interview yet, then do. Uh, it's fantastic. It's forty six minutes. It's just three Liverpool fans having a chat with you and about all the things that we've. Um, done together all the things that have happened in his time and all the wonderful memories that we'll share forever. Um, share it with your friends as well. We'd really appreciate that. Obviously, we want as many people to watch it as possible. That That's part of the reason we put it out for free. One well, of the main reasons we put it out for free is that we want Liverpool fans, even if they're not particularly engaged with what we do, to, to really enjoy it and to, to enjoy you know, these last few days of Jürgen and all the stories that come from it. So, yeah, uh, share it about. We'd appreciate that as well. But yeah, we've got we've got a couple of little uh, celebrations of Jurgen in the city as well. If anyone's coming to Liverpool this weekend, we know loads are. If you're ready there, there's one on the Albert Dock, uh, and there'll hopefully be one at Anfield as well. Uh, well, there the- is one at Anfield. <laughs> it's just whether you can see it. <laughs> there's a container in front of it at the moment, uh, so hopefully it'll be there for you to be able to get pictures and stuff like that. But if you take a picture in front of it, tag us in it. Um, we're gonna give. Uh, we've got a three liter uh, pint glass of. Uh, a Erdinger pint glass that's signed by Jurgen that we're going to give to our favourite one. So, uh, yeah, just tag us on social on any pictures. Yeah, uh, hope you've enjoyed that. Up to that. Nine years, oh my God, so many things happened going again to the final. It's incredible. Come on, what a story. Barcelona only happened to us. This generation, us who watch it now. So, these special stories, nobody can take away from us. Somebody would have told me that I will feel nine years later the, the way I feel now. I would have said, that's actually, I don't think that's possible. Um, you are a really special, special club. We turn all together from doubters to believers. So the main message is keep believing and you can keep changing the world. <laughs>